Season 1 of Glory Hunter started with a bang. But unfortunately, no Syria for AS Roma. No trophies at all, in fact. Not very good for the Glory Hunter. And with AC Milan having a managerial vacancy, I seriously considered applying for. I actually applied for two jobs. But neither of them were AC Milan. Because so soon after the sacking of Pioli, came the sacking of Inzaghi at Inter Milan. And I couldn't resist and I applied for the job. But unfortunately, I was unsuccessful and I didn't make the shortlist. They went with Diego Simeone instead. I then couldn't believe my eyes when Napoli paid £13 million for Eric Dyer. So I thought I'd focus on my own transfers at Roma and I attempted to bring in Matoma from Brighton. Brighton somehow got relegated, finishing in 20th place in the Premier League. But as soon as I bid, so does Real Madrid. Amatoma breaks Roman hearts and signs for them instead. But then I noticed the new manager of AC Milan is Christophe Gaultier, which means the PSG job is available and the Atletico job, but I didn't want to go there. So I of course apply for the PSG job too, but they hired the Lille manager Petkovic instead. So I think I'll just stay put for now. I made two signings, starting with a loan with centre-back Badia Schiele from Chelsea for a season. But the second I am excited about as he used to be one of my favourite players, Hakan Chananoglu from Inter Milan. I may have slightly overpaid, but after not getting Matoma, he was my number one target. Remember last season when we broke the record in our first match? Well, we destroyed that in our first game of the season this year. We beat Empoli 10-0 and Tammy Abraham scored six goals. Crazy. Inter come in with bids for Roger Ibanez, but I declined. I did, however, sell Justin Clivert to Marseille for 12.75 million. The Champions League draw is made and we find ourselves in Group A with Bayern Munich, Sporting and Sparta Prague. Transfer window closed and some huge deals were done this summer with Ronald Araujo moving to Man City and James Madison to Tottenham. And with a rather easy September, the month of October starts with FC Bayern Munich followed by Inter Milan. I said it was easy, but we started September with a draw against Fiorentina after they took the lead from this free-kick rebound. Hakan Chanologu capped off his Champions League debut for us with a little goal against Sparta Prague and Tammy Abraham picked up our second in the 2-1 victory. Tammy also carried on scoring a ton of goals, including a hat-trick against newly promoted Regina in a 5-0 away win with other goals scored by Dybala and Pellegrini. Tammy Abraham, in fact, scored in every game other than the 1-0 win against Sassuolo in what turned out to be a great month for us only conceding two goals. It seems the upcoming match against Inter Milan will be an important one for the early front runner in the league, while champions Atalanta currently sit in 11th place, already losing three games, and Tammy can boast about 13 goals in just six matches. But before the clash of Inter Milan, we welcome Bundesliga champions Bayern Munich to the Stadio Olimpico with a Pellegrini opening goal. All quite into the second half, and there's our star striker scoring again, but with just two minutes left, our defence held them to a clean sheet and Dybala makes it three. A trip to the San Siro was always going to be difficult and Inter Milan snatched the lead through Fran Navarro. But we needed a bit of luck and we got that when Tammy Abraham's shot rebounded off the post back into his path. The score stayed one apiece and with two wins following that meaning we kept our unbeaten run with Champions Atalanta coming up in November. Our attention until then was placed on the Champions League and Hakan Janloglu loves scoring in this competition and we secured another three points over Sporting with a Balotti second. Inter Milan surprisingly dropped more points after our draw and more positions falling down to fourth place with Sassuolo the unlikely title chasers with us so far. The game going into the Atalanta clash was a very unconvincing win against newly promoted side down to 10 men after taking the lead against us. I feared the worst as Gasparini's Atalanta team ripped through us for Duvan Zapata dispatch after just 20 minutes. We did equalise though right after half time and I will give you three guesses who scored it and I bet you got it in one. But enough celebrating you fools because we've got an unbeaten run to protect here and Adamola Luckman just ended that with Atalanta's second goal. I mean that is all your fault. I I blame you. How did we react though? We went and smashed Salah and Natano 9-0. Well, technically, we played Sporting in the Champions League in between where Dybala missed a penalty. Thankfully for him, it didn't cost us any points as we marched on within 10 minutes and scored and ran the game quite comfortably, only allowing them five shots and scoring three of our own, ending in El Shirari's 93rd minute finish. We did unfortunately also lose in our next Champions League fixture when we visited Bayern Munich. Our run coming up is very hard with Lazio, Milan, Napoli, then Juve, all back to back to back to back. 
and two wins by just a goal as we go into the Lazio derby match. After defeating them twice last year, they are going to want revenge and Felipe Anderson set them out for that just after four minutes. But fear not, we win a penalty and Belotti steps up to take it. Oh, for flub's sake. He's bloody missed it! He's what a prat! Okay, on to the AC Milan match on Abraham means business today. His second goal was quite a hilarious counter-attack, really, but his third was just beautiful to watch. We go into the new year top of the league by five points, ahead of three separate teams, and all the way down to Napoli are still fighting around the top positions. And yes, that is Tammy Abraham on 26 league goals so far. Anzalewski has the most assists in the league and it's easy to see why against Napoli when he gets another. Then I think we can all agree that Hakan Chanoglu wins goal of the season. That goal is insane. Napoli at this point got themselves down to 10 men thanks to a straight red card to Elmas and we took advantage of that score in a third through to Bala and a fourth from the ever scoring Tammy Abraham getting his 28th league goal. Shockingly, he didn't even score against Juventus but fear not my glory hunter friends because two of the other lads made sure to chip in and give us three wins from the four tricky games in a row. Not bad, really. January after those two fixtures became a lot less difficult in terms of opposition, but we still somehow dropped points to Monza. Torino in the quarterfinals of the Coppa Italia, though, and Leipzig in the Champions League knockouts. The Monza goal was only the ninth goal we have conceded this season in 21 matches. And transfer-wise around the world, in January, I was shocked to see Kimmich move for over £100 million to Man City, with Declan Rice and Hoijland moving the other way to Bayern Munich. We actually spent a bit of money on deadline day, though, bringing in legendary midfielder Tony Cruz to help us over the line and win us some trophies this season. In the Coppa Italia against Torino, we got the business done early in the quarterfinals, fairly easily, really, and it was, of course, Tammy Abraham who secured our progression with another hat-trick and two goals from corners. Despite losing their main goal for it, Atalanta still caused us problems, taking the lead just before half-time in the Serie A. We could only muster up one goal ourselves, thanks to Volpato, and it took until the 18th first minute before we rescued the point. This 1-1 draw was a sign of the wheels potentially coming off for our season though, because the end of the month included back-to-back -back losses and a five goals conceded in the two games either side of our Champions League first leg match. Now we of course have one of the world's best strikers, but as do Leipzig and a very similar style of striker in Benjamin Sesko who scored two goals putting Leipzig up in the first half. We managed to get a goal back in Germany, but we still trail in the second leg 2-0 and that's three losses in a row. And after our couple of league losses recently, our rivals Lazio are now just a point behind us and we have Inter Milan up next followed by the semi-final of the Coppa Italia against Fiorentina. The game against Inter Milan went a lot better than I expected, with Pellegrini notching the first three minutes and Tammy Abraham scoring our second in a 2-0 win in the first half. But stop what you are doing right now because Tammy Abraham has just scored a header from outside the box in the semi-final of the Coppa Italia first leg, not to mention Dybala's second was decent too, and we take a 2-0 lead in the first leg. We ruined that great win against Inter Milan with Two 0-0 draws in the league against Torino and Genoa. The 7-0 win though was needed as we have Lazio coming up and our last four games include Milan, Juventus and Napoli. Back to the Champions League second leg against Leipzig and Tammy brings us level on aggregate. And just as the referee was prepared to blow his whistle to go into extra time, Abraham scores a winner. And the draw pits us against Barcelona in the quarterfinals. And we go into the first leg off the back of a 5-0 win against Salernitana. We started the whole home leg with a really fortunate goal which goes down as the goalkeeper's own goal but we will still take it and right after half time we strike again doubling our lead through Volpato. Barcelona gathering themselves and within 10 minutes Pedri scored an outrageous finish but when Hakan Chanologlu stands over a free kick anything can happen and we go into the second leg with a 3-1 advantage. Straight into the second leg of the Camp Nou then and we extend our aggregate lead to 4-1 and then would you believe it at this point you'd think we'd be a shoe in for the semi-final but when Kingsley Coman scored two right after half time. We put the pressure on ourselves and Pedri leveled to tie with just 10 minutes left. And in the 92nd minute, Lewandowski scores a penalty and knocks us out of the Champions League. I am gutted. Dry those tears though right away because we will be in the Coppa Italia final after another win in the second leg of the semi final. What about the league though, Luke? Well, it's Derby Day and Lazio in second place takes the lead. 
But the weird shot crossed that then got tapped in and the tide was turned. And what a ball for Tammy who bagged a second. Seemingly, we were still on top going into the final stage of the match and El Shirari scored a third. And there was still time for centre-back De Vrij to score from range thanks to a goalkeeper blunder. 4-1. And we complemented that derby win against Lazio with two 1-0 wins. And Lazio dropped more points and fell to fourth place, now 10 points behind us. We lead the title race 5 points clear with 4 games left and Tammy Abraham has 43 goals. But we now have Milan, Juventus and Napoli as well as Milan again in the cup final in our sights. You would have seen me belting down the touchline when Tammy scored against Milan just after 7 minutes in. But then you would have also seen my hands on my hips clueless at how Badi Ashile scored an own goal for their equaliser. While Napoli in second place closed the gap to 2 points. Tony Cruz and his exceptional passing set us on our way to a win against Juventus as this time we capitalised and scored a second. Juventus came back with a goal of their own but Bellotti secured the vital 3 points. Napoli also won but our focus now goes to the Coppa Italia final. And I couldn't have dreamt for a better start when Tammy Abraham put us 1-0 up after 5 minutes into the Coppa Italia final. Abraham was fantastic again, snatching the ball off the defence and taking it to the byline before cutting it back for Chananoglu to blast in a second. Second. Milan did score a penalty just 20 minutes into the match though. But we hold on all game and secure the first trophy of Glory Hunter. The Coppa Italia is our sights to this fantastic Roma side. But will Napoli stop us from doing the double in the next match? That scary attacking pairing of Kravitzkelia and Victor Osman sauntered through our defence 20 minutes in and took the lead putting us level on points. And then Hakan Shananoglu made things even harder, picking up a straight red card. But we somehow got ourselves a penalty and Cristante dispatched it. But in the 85th minute, we also gave a penalty away and Napoli also didn't miss. Thankfully, with the league being sorted by results between teams, the 4-0 win we got earlier this season means we still sit top on the final day. But we seriously need to beat Verona to win the title. And Napoli, they need to beat Inter Milan away. The games had just kicked off when these came through that Inter Milan scored in the first minute against Napoli. And just five minutes later, Abraham scores at the back post. He also hounded the defence and scored a second after just 12 minutes. Verona gave us a little anxiety scare when Duda scored a penalty, but all that was washed away when Tony Cruz played a beautiful cross for Tamri Abraham to score his hat-trick. And hand AS Roma the Scudetto. Simeone also did a solid for us and his Inter Milan side held on against Napoli too, giving us clear daylight in the league title standings. And Tammy Abraham, he finished on 48 league goals. And it turns out that was Simeone's last thing he did before he got sacked. And once again, I was making this face looking at the job centre. But before then, let's celebrate the fact we have done the double in just two seasons in this glory hunter journey. And we add two trophies to our Glory Hunter cabinet. What a great start. But do we now resign? Because if we take a look at the available jobs, there is Leon and there is Chelsea. What would you do?